Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. I just finished watching 2012 Ryan Johnson's Looper, which I'm going to declare this as my first time watching it because I didn't remember anything about this. I watched this movie when I was 14 years old and I'm 23 now, so it's been a very long time. What I remembered about it was that it was basically a film about Bruce Willis killing innocent children and trying to hunt down the Antichrist. <laughs> it's funny how our, our child brains will kind of warp things to not be the truth. Uh, so that's what I remembered it from it. You know what, that's not that far off from the truth though. But no, there's no Antichrist in this. It's just a kid with telekine telekinesis. So, Looper was good. But I have a bias against Ryan Johnson because his movies annoy me. Uh, Last Jedi is awful. Um, but I'm going to try to treat it fair anyways. And for the record, I did like it. It was obviously a good movie, but I do think it needs to uh, take a step back and self-reflect a bit. I feel like this movie actually has a huge ego. Uh, it even has the audacity to do a fourth wall breaking, um, you know, basically jab at Hollywood and basically saying all movies are the same nowadays. They literally say that in the movie. Like, they don't even, like, exchange language to make it a parallel or anything. They straight up write and say, a character says, movies these days are all the same, try to be unique and fresh. That is the line that's in this movie. So from that point forward, I could tell this movie has an attitude and an ego. So it needs to take a step back, and if it wants to be considering itself the greatest of all time, then it needs to not be making so many basic mistakes that even someone who's not hired to make movies can pick up very easily. So. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a good movie, but it's not going to be 10 out of 10. No, absolutely not. Um, and I'll obviously talk about why later. So, Looper. Looper, at first glance, might seem a bit confusing and intimidating. It actually is not that confusing. The most confusing thing about it is that it randomly switches between potential timelines. So, you'll see... You'll see main characters randomly die and then come back to life because, and the reason for that is because Ryan Johnson just is just playing with you. He's basically, I would recommend just ignoring all that stuff. Anytime a main character is shot and killed in this film, don't take it seriously because it's not the primary timeline. It's basically just, it's basically Ryan Johnson just wet dreaming to himself and just trying to throw you off. So, other than the random timeline switching stuff, uh, it's actually a pretty straightforward movie. It's a sci-fi universe where um, it's like the year, it's like the 2040s is the year, and uh, time travel has not, is not possible yet, but it will be in 30 years time. So, in the future, uh, they have sent back the mafia, so the future mafia have trouble disposing of bodies and people they kill and need to get rid of. So what they do to, so, so their solution to this problem is a pretty convoluted one, but hey, that's what the movie's about, right? So the mafia basically uh, sent one of their leaders back in time to run a ring of loopers, and loopers are basically paid assassins that kill people from the future that are sent back in time. And uh, their, their money is like in gold bars, which are strapped to the target's back. And uh, yeah, so it's a sci-fi universe where time travel basically is possible and is happening, but it's only by a select few assassins. And uh, our main character, uh, Joe, played by uh, Joseph Gordon Levitz, is um, the reason he gets in trouble in this film is because he uh, is unable to kill his future self when he's sent back to him. So he faces kind of like a moral dilemma of uh, the future Joe, who's played by Bruce, Bruce Willis, is sent back in time and he, Bruce Willis, escapes. So now there's old Joe and current, or future Joe and current Joe are now in the same timeline and like universe as each other simultaneously. And this is a major loose end for the mafia and their time travel secret and all that. So they're running around the world trying to uh, track down both of them at this point because they're both loose ends basically. And uh, Bruce Willis, future Joe, is specifically uh, he, after he escapes, his objective is to hunt down uh, this kid with uh, this very young little boy with telekine telekinetic powers, probably the most powerful in the entire of this universe. Um, and uh, he's basically, he's destined to become a mob boss who is going to be responsible for the death of 
Bruce Willis's character's wife in the future, uh, his Chinese wife, because he ends up going to China instead of France, and uh, yeah, not that that's important, but I just mentioned it. But um, so Bruce Willis is trying to kill a child, and uh, he he ends up killing. Uh, two other children, maybe only one actually. I think he kills one innocent child, tries to kill another, and then he makes his way to the third one because he realizes that that's the real one. So yes, Bruce Willis is a child murderer in this one, but it is kind of a morally gray situation still because one, the kid has like satanic powers, and two, uh, he's trying to, his heart's technically in the right place even though he's going to bed in the wrong way, and I highly doubt his wife would want him to do this, but he's not really a bad guy. I mean, he's kind of the bad guy, but not really a bad guy. And, um, yeah, so that's really it. Uh, we meet Emily Blunt's character, who is like the surrogate mother for the little Antichrist child, and uh, Joseph Gordon is basically just trying to kill his future self so that he can earn back his life of partying and abusing drugs and all that. So, uh, this film, it's it's obviously good. Uh, it's an engaging and interesting one, obviously, because it's different, and it is unique to some degree. Um, you know what I'm saying is reluctantly, because I don't want to give it too much praise, because this movie is not some masterpiece that it thinks it is. But it's decent. It's not terrible. The action's good. I like how dark and gritty and taboo it gets. You don't see a lot of Hollywood movies where a popular actor like Bruce Willis is literally, you know, a child murderer and just killing them. Like, they're not even, like, hiding it or anything. You, you, you pretty much clearly see everyone dying in this film. So, it's surprisingly mature and gritty, which I liked. And uh, it's interesting for the most part. And it's well acted. So, that's, that's what I can say good about it. The negatives, though, the negatives are... These are such obvious little mistakes that shouldn't be in here. But they are. So, first of all, we've already talked about this a lot. The movie's pretentious and it has an ego. So... It, if it wants to be as great as it thinks it is, it needs to correct its mistakes and uh, be better than itself. So this is not... Just not uh, yeah, I just wish the movie didn't think it was the greatest of all time. Ryan Johnson does this with like every movie he does, though. They all come off so pretentious and just like they're sniffing their own farts. That's what this film feels like to me. So don't like that. Uh, number two, there's a lot of gratuitous nudity and there's a forced sex scene between Emily Blunt and uh, Joseph Gordon, which is honestly felt like a, a dream, like it wasn't even happening, but I'm pretty sure it did actually happen. So it was so bizarre and out of place, uh, I can't begin to explain it at all. So probably the, arguably the single most out of place sex scene I've seen since Eternals in Marvel Cinematic Universe. But at least the Eternals one, you know, those characters actually felt for each other, where in this one they, they didn't. There, there's, there was no indication of romance or feelings towards one another whatsoever prior to that sex scene at all and then it's never addressed again afterwards. So, in my opinion, number one weirdest sex scene in any movie I've ever seen. Uh, the nudity is gratuitous and just kind of, I don't know, purposeless and just whatever. Um, I mean, that, that one lady's got, she's got a nice body, but it's just, what's it doing? What's it doing in this film? So, don't know why she's naked in this film. Um, I also, this one's the funniest one to me. So this is the funniest and most obvious criticism. And I would love, maybe there's like some lore nut uh, who can tell me why this is happening, but even if you tell me why, I'm not going to accept it because it's just so stupid. So, <laughs> here's the thing. This is the future. Time travel is on the brink of existing and will exist. And uh, the motorbikes in this universe here, here's another common mistake. So, hover bikes are not some commodity for rich people. They're common things. You can get a hover bike very easily, and apparently they're pieces of crap that won't start when you need them to. So, hover bikes exist in this. Basically, like, the common motorcycle is just a hover bike, and it's, like, all futuristic and sci-fi looking. So, if that's going to exist in the world, why are the paid assassins using antique, inaccurate firearms like blunderbusses and gats? It, it's, it's hilarious to me, honestly. So basically, the entire film, the Looper's primary weapon of choice is this uh, this useless little blunderbuss that has that holds one single shot, and it cannot hit your target beyond 15 feet. So it's the most useless, impractical weapon ever. So and there's never a reason explained why they use it. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's hilarious. So they're using these. They're basically all the action in this film revolves around 
uh, a bunch of sci-fi guys in their sci-fi vehicles running around using prehistoric antique weaponry that was like used in the 1980s or something. So it's uh, it's pretty funny to me, but uh, yeah. Um, and I do want to say, I, I think I like the ending actually. I, I think I give the ending a pass. I was almost going to put that in the section here because it is very bleak and it's a little bit uh, the message is a little bit strange because I guess there kind of is none. Um, because I don't know, it's like suicide, suicide is uh, good. I guess maybe that's maybe the message of the film. I, I don't really know what the message of the film was, but uh, the day gets ended, basically the day gets saved by suicide. So hey, I guess suicide's okay. But I mean, this, this film was already featuring child murdering, so I guess suicide isn't out of the realm of possibility, but I'm going to give Looper a 6 out of 10 because it's a well-acted, uh, fairly interesting, uh, fairly unique sci-fi story, but it's not going to go higher than a 6 out of 10 because it's pretentious, it's illogical, and it's got a lot of bunch of other just stupid BS that doesn't need to be in here. So yeah, uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.